The important thing is that there has to be a realization of one very fundamental fact and that is that without access, without having broadband connected to communities, without having the infrastructure in place, the dream of having any kind of e-services uh, will not be achieved. Therefore, the infrastructure development uh, is a key aspect for realizing the goals of providing e-agriculture or e-health or e-learning or any kind of e-financial services, e-commerce and you name it. So, so the priority of the governments should be to have that basic infrastructure in place in the form of laying of the optic fiber cable, providing mobile broadband, uh, providing any type of broadband that even if it is through satellite, but to connect the people, to connect the masses, remains the key factor for realizing the agenda of providing e-services. Now, as we move along, the complaint that you will find countries making is that the priority of their budget remains uh, on other areas, and the internet or the broadband or infrastructure, the e-corridors, do not seem to have the priority of governments, especially in developing countries or least developing countries. But here the point is that the, 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 the networks and the operators who are rolling out uh, the telecom services are making a contribution uh, to the exchequer in the name of the universal service obligation. And my point here is that we should encourage the finance ministries and request them to send out that funding directly for the purpose for which it was given that is to invest in the e-infrastructure the countries have enough money in their universal service funds to help them build the infrastructure that is very required and as the world bank report suggests that every 10 percent broadband proliferation actually can give up to 1.38 percent of the growth in gdp is not something which we can just uh, shrug out. It is an important study and if this study is uh, accepted by countries, if they work on this uh, particular target, they would be able to have growth as a byproduct of providing the e-corridor and e-services and the infrastructure that is required for the broadband. Now, whether or not uh, it is possible for the countries, many countries, to, to have the true assessment done or whether or not the countries have been in a position to um, see the true benefits of putting the infrastructure for uh, e-corridors. There is uh, definitely now uh, like forums like these that we had today for a cross-sector development, a cross-sector discussion and dialogue on ICT as an enabler, there certainly is more understanding of the benefits uh, which the e-infrastructure, the e-corridors bring to the overall development agenda. The sustainable development goals, all 17 of them, do not contain even a single goal which talks about ICT proliferation. But then within each and every goal, ICT as an enabler remains the key factor. So for ICT as an enabler, there, uh, this in itself puts out ICT in the forefront because without the infrastructure, there is no possibility of reaching out to those who need us the most. The, the conclusion uh, for, and, the, and I would say the bottom line of this entire um, activity uh, outcome that we say is what would be the outcome is that your mobile phone turns into your doctor, the mobile phone turns into your agriculture expert, the mobile phone turns into your bank, your, the mobile phone turns into your teacher, your counselor and the mobile phone turns into your source of earning revenue, economic empowerment, gender, um, the gender can actually be empowered, the balance can be created by bringing more girls 
online and providing them the opportunity to bring out e-commerce activities through using their mobile connections. So this realization, this, these debates, like this for the forum today that we are here on, on e-health, create these opportunity for, um, uh, for, for people to come together, um, discuss the issues, realize the uh, potential of having the ICT infrastructure in place for them to achieve the objective, whether it is uh, of the health ministry, whether it is of the education ministry, whether it is of the finance ministry, whether it is of the commerce ministry, uh, whether it is of the interior ministry, you name it. Uh, going forward, sometimes I feel that the ICT ministries are going to be the most prominent ministries in any governments because the kind of role and the kind of importance the ICT is taking over the years and the contribution that the ICT sector brings to the, um, the overall governance uh, the citizens, the benefit that the citizens get from it, um, there is a need for the governments to focus more on the ICTs. Universal Service Funds are the first and the primary source of funding as of now. Um, the, what happens is that the Universal Service Funds come to the Exchequer but unfortunately that funding does not get used for the purpose for which it was originally made. The Universal Service Fund is, was, was created by, as a contribution by the telecommunication sector uh, as part of their corporate social responsibility to reach out to those areas where there was otherwise not a commercial case. So for the purpose of ubiquitous development, for providing equal opportunity to people living across uh, the board in all countries, this fund was accepted, this contribution was accepted and this contribution is made by the telecommunication companies. Now this is the first source of uh, revenue that is to be used for putting out the ICT infrastructure. If there is a need to further enhance or complement this fund, then Obviously, the governments have to uh, chip in uh, whatever is required. But my experience tells me that the money that comes in in the name of universal service obligation actually runs into billions of dollars uh, overall if you look at the entire globe. And if we want to connect the next 3.5 billion, we have to be honest, we have to be sincere with the cause, and we have to allow the finance ministries have to allow this fund to be utilized for the purpose of reaching out the underserved unserved areas and for putting out the e-infrastructure in place so that the, the, the operators um, can reach out uh, to those who need it the most. Pakistan experience in digital health is probably not much different from most developing countries. We today are in the process of rolling out uh, mobile broadband to the underserved and served areas, putting the infrastructure in place. I would like to share with you that when I became the minister, the broadband penetration was less than 3%. And in less than one and a half years since we allowed the spectrum and uh, introduced new technologies, today the mobile broadband has gone up to over 18%. So in 18 months, there's a jump of uh, about 15%. And I'm expecting uh, this mobile broadband coverage to be around 38 to 39% by the end of 2018. Uh, there is a, a, there's an uptake uh, of uh, mobile broadband for various all these reasons for which we use technology for. And at the same time, we are working on the HIMS, the Hospital Information Management System. There are two types of uh, e-health areas. One is telemedicine, um, uh, e-medicine e provided on over the internet. One is organizing our hospitals, getting the data in place, getting it through uh, using the, in, the, the, the technology to aggregate all the information in one place. So these two uh, different, uh, though seemingly the same, but actually two very different uh, channels are uh, being looked at. We have, we have uh, done, um, uh, the, we have taken up a few hospitals and we have installed there the HMS program. And at the same time, as we are rolling the infrastructure, we are also making a 500 telecenters 
and we are also working on providing, as I said, mobile broadband, uh, providing um, uh, access to people and also at the same time working on providing affordable connectivity to, to the underserved, unserved areas. Uh, I believe that once we have access and affordability areas handled, we will have uh, more services, not just digital health, um, but also other important areas like agriculture and learning and commerce and all of the E uh, platforms would be enabled through this mechanism in a, in a more, um, I would say, cohesive manner.